hi 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 welcome to joy fido international my name is joy fido and welcome on board so i have a lot i want to chat with you about today a lot but before i go into that i'm going to say a big big thank you big thank you to all the responses i've been receiving um the messages people have been sending to me and thanking me and sharing the messages that we're sending here thank you and the reason i'm definitely saying thank you over and over is because we've been on this journey for a long time now we started doing this some time ago years ago but you know you generally then it was mostly on youtube and then you know very few responses and it was gradually getting me to that point where i thought i wasn't getting across but now we've been able to share our various other you know media social media instagram facebook youtube so now it's really spreading and the responses are quite interesting so it gives me a lot of hope because what it is is not about me I mean, there's something I read the other day which was quite interesting, and the person said, "When people hate you so much, um, even if you're selling long, long life and prosperity, they will not buy it." And that made me laugh because you see, what I'm sharing with you is not about me. It's a message that comes through me, and I'm learning from it too. Because when these ideas hit me, the more I do these things, the more knowledge is coming to me, the more I have to share it. And if you pick up something from it, it's for your own good. So if you may, you may hate me as a person and you don't want to know about me, it doesn't bother me at all. Because that's your personal opinion. But if the message I'm sharing touches you, use it. Share it to people who may need it. Because we know so many, so many, so many people who have come and gone, our masters who came and shared knowledge with us. A good example is our Savior Jesus Christ, whom nobody listened to at that time. And today is the greatest that I ever lived. So when messages are coming through you to people, it's not for you to hold it down and keep it to yourself because then what you're actually doing is you're blocking God from using you to spread his message. So if I'm coming here chatting with you about something that's beneficial to you, use it. Share it with your friends. But anyway, I'm going to go into what today is about. So what brought about today? Um, I'll say my young son brought this out of me. We're having a good chat last night. And, you know, we work on this. We're working with videos. We're doing all of this technological things and I said to my young son he's quite young though and I said you know you need to go see with your dad who does all this editing and videoing and all of that and watch what he's doing and contribute to it ask him questions how are you doing it so you can learn something you never know when you might find it useful my son goes I have no interest in that now imagine how I feel you have no interest in that so where is your interest I don't even know. Oh, interesting. So you see, the title says, Programmed for Destruction. That's the title of today. Programmed for Destruction. I know we've done a video once where I talked about, you know, uh, program to fail. And I think then years ago, I, I, these things came to me, but I never went in depth to understand why I was saying what I was saying. You see, now I've read more books that explains what I'm supposed to be understanding in that line. And I'll show you some of the books. I know I've showed them, but you know, sometimes you might be doing something or saying something, it doesn't really register until it does register. That's my young son telling me that what he's actually seeing around him doesn't interest him. And then the voice came, programmed for discussion. So let me let me read something i always preach here all the time or talk about all the time that maybe i thought i was just talking until it, it finally hit me now this is the bible 
because again I work with the Bible a lot and I've talked about Hosea all the time Hosea um, 4 verse 6 read it up it says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge normally we just talk about that one and we let it go but it goes a bit further he says because thou hast rejected knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge can you get the word rejected it goes a lot further but that's down to you to read and then one of the people i watched this video over and over on youtube is dr africa this particular book is about nutritional destruction nutritional destruction of black people and one of the things he threw out was a people without culture do not exist a people without culture do not exist so where is the problem in that because all the things we have as a race black people do you know what happened over the years we've been programmed to reject them i know so many people who will not be seen wearing an outfit like i'm wearing african outfits and if you've been following my channel you see me with my african queen and i wear all these various things i'm, I'm coming down slowly you get this message really clearly today so a people without culture do not exist so now look at the way things go I have these conversations with my young daughter as well I walk with her and they, they, they know all the possibilities that what their offer could bring but they're not interested most of the time they're more than happy chasing out there looking for anything else but what is available and there's a saying when god gives you lemon learn to make lemonade so here's my young son with such opportunity in-house this is what people go out there to learn and spend years learning it dr dr lipton explained it a lot better which is the current book i'm still reading and still reading and still reading which i will keep reading biology of belief and what he explained there i'm not i haven't got to that part he says there's this group of people this elite group who says give me a child up to the age of seven and i'll tell you what that child will become now because i'm going to program that child in such a way that that child will do what i ask that child to do there's another book that was quite interesting regarding that. Brainwashed. Tom Burrell. And he said, these same people, you remember during slavery and all of that, by the time they were done with the black man, the black man would see his brother and run away because of the programs. The black man would, would say the things that he knew, that he owned that are his own things and he would not want to go near it because of the programs and so my people suffer for lack of knowledge and because you rejected knowledge what this is trying to explain to us is we have abandoned everything that we knew we have we have left everything that God naturally gave to us we're chasing anything else and why did that happen because we've been programmed and that's why they said give me a child up to the age of seven and i'll tell you what that child will become that's why they they they're quite happy putting knowledge into us and you know what that knowledge is the knowledge that will make us reject our own things and it's very very easy to do very very easy to do i i saw that in my own young son i see that in my children 
So what is brainwashing? What is program? Dr. Lipton went at, went at length to explain the scientific side of it. That's why that book made a lot of difference to me compared to all the other ones which have been saying the same thing, but of course in different ways. So you're constantly being given something to deal with. So he says, you can call it nurturing as well if you want to, um, conditioning, um, um, habits, uh, uh, um, ways of thinking, uh, standardization. So you see, when I say, let's start thinking, what's happening is, the thoughts we've been having haven't been progressing us. The thoughts we've been given over the years haven't helped us in any form. This is interesting because someone sent me, sent me a video the other day or a message. And he said, in the U.S., when people get to the age of 55, they have become senior citizens. I thought, mm, interesting, I'm getting closer there. But you see, ideally that's supposed to be negative, right? But I see it as positive. Why? Because that means I'm getting more wisdom. I'm getting more wisdom. So this wisdom and all these things that obviously based on my experiences of life, I have been slowly putting them together. Now is making a lot more sense. And of course, when life hits you and all kinds of negatives happen to you, and ideally people get, you know, people break down from them. But all that's happened to me has made me stronger. So we are slowly understanding what's been going on with us. We're slowly beginning to see where the problem is. So this program in nurturing ways of behavior or habits and all of that, that we picked up right from when we were kids, is what has become who we are now. And I'll tell you how it all started. When you started reading that ABC, what did they what did they connect those ABCs with? A for apple. I remember somebody talked about it in a video I watched a long time ago. Why apple? Why apple? In Africa, do we have apple in the real sense of it? But no, A for apple, so that stays stuck in your head, and then you know what happened? You not as you're growing up, you're wanting to see this apple. And so the letters are tied to things that do have no connection with what you know. So that you dream and wish and hope to get that thing. And then the, 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 the mainstream media, the news you're watching. When you watch the news, what do you get? Especially if you live in the West. All you hear is negatives about Africa. Anything black is bad. Anything white is good. I mean, there was a there was a, um, a, a a little picture I saw one time, and this was a, a black cat, and he says, um, "I'm not bad luck," because you know the natural thing is, "Oh, black cats are bad luck." I'm not bad luck. The white cat sent that message out to the world. And so now, the minute you say black cat, is bad luck. That's program. I'll tell you my story when I went into hair. I've said it several times. And when I started, then for me it was, I wanted to know how to create amazing braids and who is teaching braids. Let me be the one teaching it. And then of course everyone then was, the braids is hairdressing. And I said, no, braids is not hairdressing. There are hairdressers who cannot braid. So I want to do something different. And then I went into it. But you see, from then, I don't know what it is, but it's always been in me to be different. I don't do what everybody does. And so when I see things that, that stick out and tell me, this is, what, this is who you are, I get it. Watch the X, uh, um, it's not the X Factor or X-Men, I will talk about that later. But watch this movie, The Matrix. You see what happened with the Matrix? Dr. Lipton explains it to I've always loved that movie and I didn't know why. Everybody's going this direction and he tries going this way and he's chased right back to 
go where everybody's going. And then he goes into his sleep and then he gets his dreams and somebody gives him the red pill or the blue pill. And he says, if you take the red pill, you come out of this program, which is follow everybody. Or if you take the blue pill, you remain in the program. So this program is all, has always been there. Now, question I keep asking is, why then have we been so programmed? Why? Because the programs haven't helped us. We've been programmed because of this thing called inferiority and superiority. Now you hear this white supremacy and all of the other things that follow later and then racism and tribalism and ethnicity. All of those are things that follow this whole programming thing. But you're generally made to feel inferior. So they start hitting you in the head with, this is how you're meant to be. And then you start hearing things like, oh, what course do you want to study? Because they want to put you in a box. I saw a, a, a picture the other day on Facebook and the person says, teach your children to be useful with their hands. It doesn't matter what they get, get good at. And I said, this is what I've always thought so. I mean, I've always thought that too. But you know, the, the programs then tell you, you have to be a medical doctor, you have to be an accountant, you have to be a lawyer, you have to be an architect, you have to be, and then they come up with all these names. But you know what those names mean? You completely deviate, go away from what God wants from you. Because what then happens is, I will have no issues with if you finish with all these courses and there's a guaranteed job waiting out there for you. Electrical engineer, chemical engineer, da 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 da. You finish all of that and there are no jobs. Do you then know what happens? Frustration. Because you've been hyped up to feel that you're doing something amazingly great. And then what then happens? You crash. And this, this man, young man in, in this book explains it better. Because in miseducation, miseducation of the Negro, he told the story of how this young man read and read and read and had first class and had all he needed to have. And there was this young girl in the same class whose mom had a, 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 a dry cleaning business and she never could really understand what was going on in the class and barely connected her with the class, eventually dropped off and went to run her mother's business. And this young man with all his first class came out and there was no job for him. And he felt so frustrated. And that's the problem. So some of the things I want us to really look at as, as a race in particular, as black people, based on the programs we've been dealing with, One of the biggest things we need to ask ourselves is, what is life really about? Is it not about survival? To me, that's what it is. It's about survival. And so, at this point in time, it does not matter where you are born in the sense of location. You want to survive. That's what it is. But because of the programs we're dealing with, we suddenly don't see any good in where we are from or where we belong to. And so you start hearing these stories of migrant ship, people dying in the high sea, because we're all running away from what we know. Remember when I talked about culture? The people without culture don't exist. So now, because of the program, it's like they practically ruined, cleaned, cleaned our head. So we don't see anything good in who we are anymore. But we have to imitate everything else that's not us. 
And so when I went into here, I started questioning that. I cannot be doing something that you have to keep teaching me for the rest of my life. I want to do something that I am good at. And so I took it on. I want to be in a position where I lead. That's just me. Because I don't see the point of, if I now become a hairdresser, I would never be in a position to say, oh look, this was my idea. Because I have to follow standards. I have to follow what has been written, what has been said, what has been done. And I, I did go to a hairdressing school and I tell you I fought every day. For reasons, I didn't see the point of what they were trying to teach me. Who came me calling the hair and straightened me and I said, but what is the reason for that? Why am I doing that? Oh yeah, you know this hair is so unruly, you have to you have to make tame it so that it can behave. Why would I want to tame my hair? Do you know do you understand my hair? Do you know why my hair behaves the way it does? Program. For me to feel uncomfortable with my own hair that I have to change its texture in order for it to behave to suit what you think it should be. No. God did not say we should all be the same. Because if he wanted us all to be the same, he would have created us the same. Look in the fields. All the flowers look different. So why do we all have to have straight hair? I don't mind if I have to wear a wig and let it be straight. But I know I will take it off and I will still have my hair. So why do I have to keep putting chemicals in my hair? And so I queried it. And so I did not feel comfortable with it. And so I came up with my own ideas of what should have been done. These are some of the things we need. Let's start thinking. Because now, as Africans, we've been now made to not feel comfortable in our own home. So that we have to run away and leave everything we have. And then we chase. Because programs have defined us. Programs have told us what we should be, how we should be, what, what we should eat, what we should drink how we should dress how our hair should look like and so suddenly we now all want to become chemical engineers and biological engineers and, and, uh, and lawyers and doctors and accountants and, and so all the natural local things that belong to us we don't know those things anymore hence the people without a culture do not exist Programs are designed by man. And so what I found out is, for as long as somebody does not understand something, this is what they will do. They will tell you that that thing is wrong. They don't understand it. That was my experience with Brady. They don't know what the heck I'm doing with strands of hair. So what, what should I rather tell her? It's rubbish. Why can't you be honest enough to say, I don't understand what you're doing. Can you show me? I mean, there, there was one time, this was Daily Mail or whatever. I can't remember how long ago that was. And Daily Mail went online and said, the black woman is the ugliest woman on earth. It became a big thing. How did you wake up and decide the black woman is the ugliest woman on earth? What do you think that was meant to be? To mess around with your spirituality or your... Or your or your your thinking or your your spirit so you start feeling uncomfortable and feeling inferior but i'm sorry i'm not ugly i'm holy and 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 and, and graciously created by god for reasons best known to him so you cannot sit as a man and look in my face and tell me you're ugly let that be god's choice and like i said in some programs here on this channel the physical image means nothing. The spirit has no image. When this is all done, it is just chucked by the roadside and the spirit moves on. So what is this big deal about ugly and pretty and designer this and clothes and all? All of that is just things created by man. So the sooner we start waking up from these programs, the better for all of us. make us disobey God. Hence, 
Hence, we refuse to take knowledge. Hence, the things around us, we don't accept it. Because we're waiting for what someone else has told us that that's better. And I'll, I'll give you a good example. Those of, those of us from Africa, we have 12 months of sunshine in Africa. And there's something right now which we all now know called solar power. So we have sunshine 12 months of the year. And there's something called solar power. But what's the reality in Africa? What's the reality? We're in darkness. What does that tell us? We've disobeyed God. He gave us all that sunshine 12, uh, 12 months of the year. But what, what do we do? Because we're not thinking, because we've been programmed not to see what we own. We're all chasing maybe snow. We think snow is better. We'd rather stay in the cold, frozen weather. Now, the reason we've been programmed not to see our sun is because there are no sun here, practically. When we have summer, it tops is one month. And the weather goes downhill again. And so what, 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 what does a typical Western nation do? They look at other ways they can make it work for them. So, okay, petroleum is an option. Yeah, let's go around the world and find every, petro every country with petroleum and start using petroleum to create electricity and all of that. So, we were not encouraged or we're not trained or, should I say, programmed to not see what we have. Because they don't have it, so we should also not see it. Does it make sense? And that's the same thing that comes right back to even the minutest of things. Your hair is rubbish. It doesn't respond to any rules because you don't have that hair. So you don't have it. You don't understand it. Why don't you just say, I don't know your hair. You go deal with your hair. No, your hair is rubbish. What does that mean? Let me make you feel small. Let me make you feel inferior by telling you that your hair is rubbish. Do you see how it works? So you have sunshine. Let me not even make a song and dance about sunshine because I don't have sunshine and I really don't want to deal with what I don't know. But in the meantime, let me focus on what I could find easily. But I would distract you so much that you don't see what you have so that you would chase me for what I have. That's the same thing they do with tropical fruits. I mean, I brought, I brought some two books here for you to see. And I'll tell you a story about that. I was pregnant with my third daughter and at that time I'd started, you know, when you have pica being pregnant, you, you, you have taste buds for certain things. And I had taste buds for, you know, lots of fruits and things. And then it got too much. The sugar content in my body got too much. And then I picked up pregnancy diabetes. And so I would go for a test and, and, and this nurse says to me, Oh, the reason you've got this is because of all the African food that you eat. And you can imagine my shock. I'm just trying to understand what could have led to this. You know, African food that you eat? And I'm thinking, what food was he eating? I'm not really one for starchy food. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of starchy food. My relatives know that right from when I was young, I, I used to just go without our typical food. I have no problem again. When I do eat, I just eat a little bit. But no, that's just my taste buds. And now I'm being told it's because of all that African food you eat. And I, I had to think. And I queried, I said, what are you talking about? So automatically, I'm a black woman, African woman, you have been eating starchy food or uh, African food. That's why you have pregnancy diabetes. Are you telling me every African has pregnancy diabetes? And so I told myself, I will come out of this. And that's why when I read, when I read uh, um, uh, Dr. Lipton's biology of belief, telling me that all that nonsense about your parents having that disease and you should have it 
and your great grandparent having this and you should have because that's the thing they do with you in the western world you go to hospital for anything do, did your parents uh, uh, suffer from diabetes did they suffer from high blood pressure did they so they start pulling these things out of you so they look for where to connect it that's program he explained it using signs to explain why it is not true because it is your environment and lifestyle that could bring some of these things out of you and i knew clearly that it was based on the amount of fruits i was eating because i was actually juicing fruits and just drinking plainly just taking on sugar and i had to go into nutrition i had to go and study nutrition in order to understand why my brother died from high blood pressure my dad died from stroke and now somebody's trying to tell me i am going to be going that direction i i refuse to accept it and in the process i learned so much books like this the coconut bible books like this the palm oil miracle but no in their in their typical way of programming you they had made you believe that palm oil was bad Nigeria with all the palm oil we had, we stopped doing palm oil. Now who's the bigger producer of palm oil? Malaysia. And so the program was for you to reject the things you own because they don't have it. And so how can we make them feel uncomfortable? How can we make them feel small? Ah, we tell them it is bad. And why, why would we accept it? Because we think in our head they know better than us. They've been teaching us all this year, so they know. And 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 they they, they were our masters, so they know. Uh, 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 slavery. But see, that was one of our biggest undoing. Because now, from some of the questions Dr. Africa asks, and brainwashed asks, and miseducation asks, with all this knowledge that they supposedly have been given us, what has changed? That's the question I asked them. What has changed? Why hasn't Africa become better? Why are we still all hopping into that migrant boat and hopping across? Why are we seeing, you know, the grass is greener on the other side? Why is that grass not greener on our side yet? programming they never want you to have that freedom they never want you to have that independence they never want you to know who you are we did a program where i said know who you are because when you look into africa there is everything there bible has told us we we love our christianity bible has told us you suffer for lack of knowledge and that's because you reject knowledge. Knowledge being your culture. Knowledge being the things you already know. You've abandoned them. Because we're all chasing the one thing, the same thing. There's a program I watched on, on BBC iPlayer. And this program is called, um, let me see if I can even find where I wrote. BBC iPlayer. And it's called how to break into the elite so if you if you bbc3 i play if you go into that channel and you search it how to break into the elite it just begins to explain some more to you because we need to wake up that's why i keep coming back here these people spend so much money training their children they send them to sometimes you hear public school sometimes they say private school i don't know which one is which and so they raise their children to mentally know in their head that they are going to be the ceos of all the index 100 or whatever they call those companies and then when they finish so they start putting these ideas into them and preparing them for the future basically 
So you not send your child to again regular school. And it's it's already cut and dry. The way it's going, you know, like when they say par parallel lines, parallel. These lines are never going to meet. That's what it is. They are never meant to meet. Because these people have been programming the children, preparing them for leadership. To the point that the program explained that no matter how smart your child gets in the classroom, which is this, yeah, come and read and write, read and write, the same programming they put in your head, A, B, C, D, A for Apple, go and do all of that and get your first class. There was this boy that was in the program, first class, he never got any job. But the, this elite children whose parents have been baking them from, from zero, playing golf, doing all the things they need to do to remain in that elite group, before they even finish their first year, they already know where they're going to do their work experience and blending and carry on. It's, you know how when you're running in the marathon, and not marathon, a four by four relay, and then as you run and you give the batting to the next person and that person runs and give the bat, that's how it is. Their parents have already finished, nearly finishing that race, so they've been preparing their children with, with the batting ready so that as they are leaving, as they are going into retirement, their children take over. So there is no hope. No matter how well educated your child may get. Occasionally they filter into the Cambridges and the Harvards and the and the and the and the Oxfords of this world. But even when they're done with that, if you don't interact with them while you're there in that school and start mixing with them and start speaking their language because now it was not even the fact that they were white or black or whatever it was about presentation and how you speak spoken english and all the you know culture and and upbringing and demeanor whatever all the words that you need to know you're not going to join them and that's program so how do you then sit there and think that you need to abandon who you are just to, just to meet up? One of the things I, I, I say to people, like what I said to my hairdressing teacher is, you know, you can never be better than your teacher, no matter how great you think you are. You may just add another angle for something, but for as long as somebody is the one who's teaching you something, don't plan on saying, I'm going to be better than that person. And that's what the truth is. For as long as we're taking on Western education, Western is Western and aspiring to be, they, they will keep shifting the goalpost. That's what it is. You're never going to catch up. That's what it is. And that's what programming is all about. So the sooner we go back to our roots, according to Dr. Africa, the better for us. The sooner we begin to appreciate the sunshine in Africa and see how we can turn that sun into electricity for our own use, for our own people. And not chase all of them into some migrant boat to go chasing. Question I ask when we all keep chasing to go to the West, US, Canada, America, you name it, England, Europe. What do we think is waiting there for us? What, what is waiting? Is there a red carpet at the entrance to that country that as you arrive they say, Oh, we've been waiting for you. I mean, there's a job that's got your name written on it and, you know, that's your decks. Because, you know what, this whole country, we don't have anyone that have your unique skills. So that's why we, we couldn't wait. We've been waiting all our lives for you. No such luck. I'm sorry. No such luck. So, while, while all of these things has been happening to us may be a negative, it is also a positive because now we should be wiser. And that's why someone like me, you see me when I get into Africa, I get excited. I get excited because I know the opportunities that are sitting in my face that, are, that is waiting for me to come and explore it. I'll give you a story. 
I went to visit my sister in in um, Lincoln, Nebraska, and um, and she said she said to me, "Oh, let's let's go let's go to the fabric sh fabric shop or fabric store." And this was, you know, her daughter was getting married, my niece was getting married, so we're there putting things together, organizing all of that. So we're going to the fabric shop. So I'm excited. Oh yeah, fabric store. And we got there and it was this building. Oh yeah. And there's this aisle for needles and threads and this aisle for um, maybe, uh, you know, those laces, trimmings. And then there's this aisle for, and this aisle for, and I'm thinking, this is the fabric store? Yes. With a big fat sign on it. And then of course with a contact number and all of the things, and maybe a website as well, I'm sure. Why do you th why do you think I'm 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 telling you this story? Because when you go to Lagos, Nigeria, for instance, and you go to Osho the market, and you see fabric upon fabric upon fabric, and and you know like arrays of stores and arrays of stores, and and it's just endless. It's like a sea, texture, color. You name it. It's a designer's dreamland. A designer will faint in that place. We haven't talked about uh, uh, Idumota Market where, again, you it's endless. Because years ago, before I even came over to the West, I had a business then I got perfect finish. And it was, you know, a designer making shop. We were making clothes and designing all kinds of clothes then. And I used to practically sleep in the market, Balogu market, going from shop to shop. With Balogu market, you have to understand the market because you can get lost in that market. If you haven't eaten, don't go to that market. Just a few steps and you're already panting because the crowd in the market. And there's an area for this, an area for that. You have to, I mean, there should be a map designing telling you this is the area for this and when you get in you know how like in london when you get into an area that the, there's a map that says you're standing here so turn left turn right to get this and turn. so it's like they give you guidance that's what probably now that i'm talking about that's what i'll probably be doing when i get back to nature give guidance on how to find what where that's a market Oh, but the U.S. is a designer shop, fabric store. You see, the opportunity that is lying in our face right there in Lagos, we don't see it. We all want to enter that migrant ship and, and go over to that one fabric shop. Is it a wonder we don't get anywhere? They wonder nothing happens. Black people rebel against everything except religion. They even think they are more religious than those who brought them those these concepts, and that the colonizers are not good Christians. Black people even claimed themselves to be the original race of which Jesus Christ has descended. I don't want to know how true or not true, but this is something that I, that I came across. This is how far black people's stupidity can go. Notice that any society that is full with superstition, religion, indoctrination, Lack of education, nationalization is always ridden with violence. And who supposedly wrote this? Xi Jinping of China. There was one time too they circulated something like that and claimed it was um, Donald Trump that wrote it. But even in that, you will read some little, little bits of things that maybe adds up. Maybe adds up. Now, for example, China. What did China do?
China locked its doors from the rest of the world when it ne needed to stabilize itself, when it needed to start all over again. Even right now, you go to China, you can't have access to internet. Very rarely. Because several times we've been there, we it's very difficult to interact with the rest of the world because they block everything. They know that the minute you allow your senses to start feeling things from other people, you will be influenced. And when you go to Nigeria, this is very true. Every Nigerian, practically, what they're seeing is everything that's happening in America. The grass is so green there. And then you see them begin to speak with American accent. To the point, if you haven't even got American accent right now, to get a job in Nigeria is even more difficult. Because we see what is not real. And then we'll happily hide under, but we lack. But there are no jobs. But this, but that. And the real power that we're supposed to have, we don't have it. Look into ourselves and know who we are. And start using our thoughts to create new things. And you know, when I did, one of my courses I did, one of the modules I did in my course, about human resources, it touched me. Nigeria has 200 million people and growing. Africa has a billion people and growing. Now, in all these billion people lies opportunities, lies capabilities, lies things that can turn our continent around and it will be such a place that people will come and visit too. And we may probably even think of having overcrowding to the point now we say, okay, we don't want any more. Why can't we get to that level? We know nature has thrown in our face. Look at Zambia and Zimbabwe. Uh, um, uh, is it Zambia? One of them where we have the, 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 the lake. Lake Victoria or something like that. We went all the way to Brazil to go and see a lake. But Africa has. Do we know how to turn it around into an industry? Gambia is huge in, in, in travel and tourism. But I was having a chat with a lady the other day, and she said, I've never been, I would love to visit. And she said, when you get there, it's all the same people. Yeah. Leakage. Because the same people come over and set up these resorts and set up these things. And the, 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 the farthest they go is employ the locals to be the cleaners. They are not going to employ you to be a manager. Because you're so ignorant, you can't think. And so they make you a cleaner. You should be grateful. And th there is no hope of you ever using those results to go and enjoy yourself as well like the rest of the people. But they will come over to the West and advertise how amazing Gambia is and how amazing Zambia is or, or Zimbabwe. And then, then, then they come over and spend all the money that they come with and then they take the same money out of the system. That's called linkage. So what could have been wrong with all these rich pins, rich, rich government Africans or whatever who have access to all this money to actually engage ourselves, engage us, our own people to create these results and create this welcoming, hospitable or hospitality envir environments that people can come to and then pay us the money that stays in our system that we can now use to create employment for our people. Or we invested all that money in infrastructure, creating our roads to be welcoming, the airports to be attractive so that people can say, let me visit there. Because if there were jobs for everybody, would there be lack of security? Would we still have this amazing job and still say, no, no, no. Uh, well, I may love my job. I still want to go and kidnap people and, and, and end more. No, we wouldn't be doing that because we'll, we'll have enough. So why have we not even 
even begin to think about it. Why is it that there are no kidnappings in the West? Why are we not thinking that? Because, because our mind has been so cleaned out that we cannot think. I mean, I feel, this is what I feel. I feel the West feels really good with itself. For reasons, they have messed around with our thinking so much that they don't have to do anything anymore to make us just remain the way we are. To not to make us not see the potential that Africa has. Hence, hence, look, look, look at this material. I've shown it before on this channel. The new colonialism. The new colonialism where all these companies come to Africa and take over our lands, take over all our resources, and we are sitting there. They buy the choicest areas of lands. Right now, China is doing it. China is going around the world, owning everywhere. Because our brains have been so programmed that we don't see what we have. And I can't remember who it was that said, if the rest of the world is chasing Africa to be there. Why are Africans running out? Why are we in a hurry to run out when everybody's running in? That's programming. That's programming. Because we've been made, we've been made not to see what we have. We should never see it. We should never see that Balogo market. We should never see that Oshudi market. We should never see the petroleum in our soils. We should never see the sunshine we have 12 months of the year. We should never see the fruit trees that are sitting in our face begging us to please do something with it. We should just sit there and disobey God. But yet we're praying to God every day. So please give us something. Give us something. And God is looking at us and saying, But I have given you so much. I have given you so much. Wake up. Do something with what I've given you. No, because we have allowed other people to mentally new colonialism colonize us in our mind. So that he doesn't need to say anything to us and we, we just follow because he has made us feel that fish and chips is a better food than your gari and okra or a goosey and pan and yam. No, fish and chips is better. Chicken and chips, um, burger. And he packages it so beautifully. He gives you, he gives you Coca-Cola, which is all practically they've done. People have done lots of research on these things. Chemicals that destroy your body. That's what you want to drink and eat because the white man gave you that. But the fruit tree right under your nose, the orange tree, the banana tree, the, 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 the watermelon, all those things that God put in your care to go and have dominion over and enjoy you don't see it you want to see that one that's in the West because the grass is greener there we need to wake up and we need to think we need to do it really quick because our children are going to suffer for it and that's why my son telling me, I can't, I don't like it, woke me up. Woke me up because I realized from what Dr. Lipton said, the programming starts from a very young age. Such that by the time he's seven, he already is ready for what they want. It's like they just snap you and then you jump. There's a, a movie I watched as well called, uh, um, is, uh, which one? I can't remember what that movie was called again not us us is the one where you have to look into yourself get out get out put the young man in a trance and everything the young man had 
they wanted from him. But he didn't even know that what he had is what they were after. That's the same message here. Get out. Get out of that book. Get out of it because it's going to destroy Africa completely. The way things are going. And now you've, you've had a whole president telling you, go back to where you came from. How else could you possibly read the message? But you see, because we cannot see beyond, because we've been so programmed that we can't see what we have, we think it's some silly joke. Ha, ha, ha. And then maybe we then turn around, we start feeling inferior. But if you see what you have, you don't need to be bothered about such statements. Because what you have is a lot. What you have is a lot. The sooner we can start working with our children to wake them up, the better for all of us. The better for all of us. Because I'm not going to sit here idly and watch my child being put in a situation where he has no belief in who he is. And I don't want you to do that with your child as well. Because luckily we've got books like this that's been trying to tell us what's been going on, but we never got it. Now I wish I, wish I knew things like this years ago. Because now, yes, I've been through the whole system. I've been washed clean over and over and over a million times. <laughs> and you know, when, when, when I talk about that movie, The Matrix telling us, take the red pill. I had, I had to see things like that to get me the message. I was watching a program the other day, you know, Jack Ma, the, the owner of Alibaba and Alipay and all of those. Chinese things and they were asking him I mean nobody's been through a worst experience of the West than Jack Ma he was rejected uncountable times in anything he wanted to do I was having a child with my daughter and we were laughing I said well look at Jack Ma's image automatically you think he's a well you just have an image you think you look at him you think of something and you know when they say image matters, so I don't know what it was that they saw, but they never saw this person. They never saw the soul that was inside this person. And he said there was an interview he went for once, and 30 people attended that interview. Only one person was rejected, everybody was taken. Who do you think the one person was? It was him. Harvard School rejected him several times because they were running, they just would not take him. And so he experience all these rejections and what he said was instead of those rejections to weaken him they were making him stronger now one of his one of the movies he loved watching was um i can't remember what that movie is called it was it will come to me so he said he watched that movie and that movie gave him hope and that's why I never stopped talking about movies here. That movie gave him hope. Uh, run, run. Oh, I remember a passage in the movie. Anyway, he watched that movie. Now, that man never gave up. Forrest Gump. He watched that movie, Forrest Gump. And he said, when he saw Forrest Gump, never given up. Run, Forrest, run. That's part, that's, you know, a part of the movie. Run, Forrest. Forrest Gump never stopped running. He just kept running. That gave him hope. And that made him stronger by the day. So now, think about this. Isn't that the kind of way we should all be thinking? How we should never give up hope and start thinking, what can we do to help ourselves and look inwards? He was not coming to compete with them. He went back to China and changed the way things were. Alibaba is China-based. Alipay is China-based. 
He didn't go, no, I must, I must be in the system. I must be part of Harvard. I must be, I must be. No. He said, okay, you rejected me. I don't belong here. Fine, I'll go and find elsewhere and showcase what I know. He learned from them and went and used it elsewhere. So we don't have to sit put and say, until the system accepts me, my life is done. No. Because one of the things he also said, which made a lot of sense, and even I am working on it, he said, wherever you are, you are going to hear people complaining. You're going to hear people complain. You're going to hear people complaining about something. He said, whenever there is a complaint, take this seriously now. Whenever there's a complaint, there is an opportunity. And I go, ding. I'm going to learn that too. I'm going to be looking out for complaints. Because look around you. I've done a program where I talked about, you know, contribute to your community. It's not about coming to challenge somebody else or from that program I'm talking about on the BBC channel, trying to be part of the elite and trying to fit in by force. That's not where we want to be. Look into your community. I did a program on that. There are needs in your community. There are desires. There are complaints. Go and be the solution. Provide that answer. Give the answer to that need. Because this whole thing about superior and inferior will always be there. People want to deliberately weaken you. And you know when I started, I said it's about survival. Your life on this earth is about you surviving and contributing your bit to life. So if you want to spend the rest of your life, born this date, gone this date, in between, chasing and wanting to compete and wanting to belong and wanting to be noticed and wanting to be accepted and wanting, you are going to die empty. You are going to die achieving nothing. So it's for you to start thinking, where are the complaints? Where are the needs in my community? Where can I fit in? Where can I contribute? Years ago when I went into braiding, everyone was laughing at me. So the complaints now could be, you know, in my local community, people don't do braids well. If they don't do braids well, this is what we created this program. To teach you how to sit at home and learn how to create amazing hairstyles. There are demands in your community. I hear that all the time. People come in here. Oh, the person who did my hair didn't do a good job. They didn't, he didn't sit well. And then he came out in no time. Why are you not thinking I should be the one answering that need? I don't chase everybody to come to me because I'm very busy. You can see every time I'm here chatting with you. I spend time picking up messages that I need to share with you. So I don't have all the time in the world to sit down and be braiding people's hair. I love it. I would love to be doing that. But no. I have bigger needs. And I tell you, this is even one of the reasons I, 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 I decided that wasn't going to be me. Why? Because of this same program. I'll tell you my story. Program. You're sitting down there. You want to you wanna walk on somebody's hand. Give them the best service you can think of. And then what do they want to do? They, they want to pay peanuts. But, but is it not just braids? But someone's going to sit behind you for eight hours for ten hours for six hours for seven hours i've done hairdressing hairdressing 30 minutes one hour they finish cutting the hair 70 pounds but someone want to stand behind you for hours and you go to work and you get paid but you want to pay this person peanuts because in your programmed mindset braiding is nothing and the same people same people, you give them, you know, hair extensions, straight hair. Oh, that's okay. Two thousand dollars. When praise that somebody is standing behind you for hours, hundred dollars. Then you wonder, 
Where is that problem coming from? It's a clog in the, in the wheel of progress. Because someone's put something in your head to make you feel that thing that belongs in your community is not good enough. It's not meeting our standards. So it's rubbish. Just like they tell you, your hair's rubbish. Just like they tell you, you're ugly. So they sit in you, they sit on you, they, they walk with your mind, they make you feel inferior. There was a program on, it's on YouTube, 400 years without a comb. They started from there. Touching your skin. Is it touching mine? It, does it rub off? Misinformed people. And so you accept it. And then the things in your community, you have absolutely no value for it. You see somebody dressed up in African outfit? Oh. They're going to wear a suit and tie. Oh, yeah. Do you see that messed up mindset? Program. And so when I was beginning to get all this messed up thing, I said, you want to come here and I train you and you gain a skill that will help you achieve things. Then you start thinking, oh, is it not? I actually have some had someone who the training I offer here because of the way I chose to do it. I could do it. I said to you one day a week for 10 weeks. And this lady said to me, is it not only braiding and weaving? Why can I do it in two days? And where did you come up with that? Oh, but because it's only braiding and weaving. Have you done braiding and weaving before? No, I haven't. But you already know. And what was interesting was this person was studying hairdressing. I have studied hairdressing. It took me two years. One year to do level whatever and another level and all of that level nonsense. And I said, how long are you doing your hairdressing course? Two years. But you want to spend two days to learn various types of hair braiding techniques. Do you think you have any appreciation of what you're going to be learning? Absolutely not. And that's done again to the mindset. That's done again to the conditioning. That done, that's done again to the programs. That's done again to all oh, my community is nothing. So why should I have any appreciation for what I'm going to learn there? So we have a big job on our hands. We have a big job on our hands. All of us. All of us have to go into our community. We need to start letting our people know what's going on. We need to start empowering ourselves. We need to start waking up from this trance. This messed up thinking. We need to start allowing our children to start thinking with their minds their own mind, the God-given mind that they have, to see how they can turn the natural resources in Africa to our benefit. Turn the natural resources in the black community to our benefit. We need to wake up. I just, I just feel so incensed. I feel so incensed. I feel so incensed when this topic came to me because I feel I feel like we've spent years and centuries in darkness. That's what it is. And so everything that's been working with me practically have been preparing me for this. I don't know. You ask a young child right now, what do you want to be? I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a celebrity. Because that's all that we've been, our children have been exposed to. Our children don't know anything about. I want to be able to be, to create something new. I want, I want to see what you do, mom, so that I can see what I can add to it and change it for the better. Because see, we have all these opportunities around us. Endless opportunity. 
Okay, we're talking about complaining. You, you see, you see, our children want to wear designer this and designer that. Who put those programs in their head? Who made them feel that until they have that designer, they don't, they, they call it drip. They, they, they are not good enough until they wear that. They are not good enough. Programs. I see, for as long as they pulled their mindset to be thinking in that direction, for as long as you're engaged in that way of thinking, you're never going to be in a position where you say, I want to start something from zero and I want to see how it grows. Because years ago when I, when I started wondering about this, And I came across this biology of biology of, uh, um, of belief, and Dr. Lipton explained that you know what you can actually snap out of that trance. You can actually take that red pill, and apparently there are so many different things they've come up with that will help you have a better way of reasoning. I haven't got to that part of the book, but you see the one that he said that got me watching his YouTube videos. Is, he says, fake it till you make it. He said, practice. Just keep practicing. Anything you consciously want to learn, anything you consciously know you want to do, all you have to do is don't worry about today. Just keep doing it over and over and over. The more you do it, the more you're going to transfer that thing to your subconscious, which is the mind that, that actually runs us on a daily basis because the, sub, the, the, the conscious mind runs us five percent of the day that's the part of us that thinks but the subconscious is the one that's been given instruction hence that's the one that has all the program hence the, the, the child has been trained which program from the age of whatever to age of seven has taken on all these things into his subconscious hence he acts his subconscious and how did that go about? They're watching TV all the time. Watch all these Disney channels. All those little, little, subtle, 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 subtle information they keep throwing at the kids. These are the programs they are building into them. They tell you, you know, movie, movie for children. That's how they're building it up. So by the time they're already seven, They've been watching these channels, they've been watching these movies, they've been, they've been looking at their phone 24-7, which is technology that's supposed to be good for us. Yes, it is good for us, but what, they, what they're getting is the negative side. So they've, they've downloaded all this information into their subconscious and now they are leaving it. Now they're telling you, I only wear designer. Do you know how much designer costs? Again, that's another way they want to pull the money out of you. So that for the rest of your life, you'll be working for them. You see young black boys, especially the boys, all they want to wear is, the, the, if there's a queue, if there's any, I, I, my son was making me watch a program the other day on YouTube. This person is selling designer shoes and the queue for these shoes and I said, does this person teach you also how to work hard and make the money that will make you buy those shoes? No, because they, they put it in our children's mind to start thinking how they can steal, how they can go and, um, and sell drugs, how they, can, how they can harass their parents so that, you know, whatever your, your parents says is wrong, such that they, they, then, then, they, then they put their parents into this um guilt guilt mode that um your child asked for something and you couldn't give him so you are now the bad one but that child has not thought first how does mommy make that money how does daddy make that money why am i asking for this no that child will not ask for that what the child wants to know is i want to drip so all of that has been slowly seeped into their thinking over the years of watching Disney channels and all the various things that they throw at them. 
and then you could bring your, I mean, trust me, I brought my African outfit to my son. I won't wear that. And I know so many black kids, so many African kids who will not be seen dead wearing African clothes because it doesn't drip. He hasn't got a brand attached to it. So do you see again opportunity that we have to brand, brand our African outfits and maybe look for a way to get that message slowly into their head too so they can start thinking that, ah, I actually do come from somewhere. That's what Dr. Africa has been trying to preach. A people without culture don't exist. So invariably, because we've re rejected, according to the Bible, rejected knowledge, our culture is dying out. Who we are is dying out. Now we are trying to be who we are not and who we will never be. Hence, we are being told, go back to where you come from. And so, look at how we are just nowhere. That's what it is. We don't belong anywhere. We're not there. We're not here. We're just in between. Belonging nowhere. So if you are anything like me, you will start thinking. You start thinking in the sense of what are the opportunities around me? What can I what can I turn my eyes into? What can I do that will help? So I went into hair, braiding, which is for my community, working with my people. I went into African fashion for my community, for my people. I'm looking at African food for my community, for my people. So start looking into what belongs to your community. Start looking into that. And stop competing with people because you are never going to win. You are never going to be better than the person who makes fish and chips. You're never going to be better than designer brands. You're, not, you're never going to be better than the typical hairdressing salon who knows how to blow dry hair and make it stand out. There is no need for that competition because there's something for all of us on this earth. There's the sunshine in Africa which we need to think. How are we going to channel that sun into solar power and electrify everywhere in Africa? We need to think about that. We need to think how we can turn. Look at them. They've come here. They've used all our natural resources. Ten companies on the London Stock Exchange. Drills, pools, drags. Take whatever they can find in Africa. Mine it. Turn it around. Gold, platinum, silver. Uh, what's it called? Diamond from Africa. We need to think how can we also do the same thing with our own natural resources? How do because I tell you one thing they're never gonna teach us. We need to know that. You know why? Because if they teach us, we'll gain freedom, and freedom is what they don't want to give us. Hence, what did they even call it? New colonialism. Hence, mental colonialism. Hence Continue to feel inferior. Hence, belong to the elite group. It serves their purpose. It serves their purpose that Africans continue to run away, migrate from Africa and come here. And you know why? Because as we are running out, they are running in. And now there's nobody who's going to argue with them. Why are you taking that oil? Why are you taking that diamond? Why are you taking that gold? So, this is the time to think. This is the time to start planning. Because I know there's so many of you out there who I, I, I know who say, I will never live in uh, England. I will never leave America. Don't leave. Don't leave. You can stay there. But the sad, the sad truth that you may not want to hear is it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough for you to get to that point where you become the owner, the creator, the initiator, the designer, the maker. The one who knows what he's talking about. Because when I started braiding, it was a nightmare. People would not... People thought I was 
I was stupid. Yeah, people thought I was stupid because, yeah, because way back home, where I come from, it's the illiterate child that does breeding, the one who refused to go to school. The one who doesn't have head for school, that's the one that breeds. That's the program. Programmed to think that what you have is inferior. That's the program. Programmed to think that, you know what, this whole country is a mess. Let me run out. That's the program. And because it serves their purpose, they work with our leaders so they also they kind of like put fire underneath us so that we you know you know when you are in a house and there's fire burning what happens you run you run out of the house that's what's going on so all that all that kidnapping all that fulani men all that all of these things are well orchestrated that's why they didn't try the ebola stunt people who know these things know they constantly giving us something to, to create fear. But you see, I've had to ask this over and over. They give us fear when we're sitting in our country. Then they, when you come here, they also give you fear. They chase you with every bill they can find. Every bill. You turn left, like there's a bill. You turn right, there's a bill. Bill, 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 so that your mind cannot settle down to think. I want them to actually ask, so what do they really want from black people? What do they want from us? Bible said it. We suffer for lack of knowledge because we reject knowledge. We reject our own knowledge. We reject our own culture. We reject our own beings. I'm going to leave it here because you know what? I don't know if I made any sense. I don't know if I made any sense. But I'm hoping I've touched you. And I'm hoping I'm giving you something to think about. And I'm hoping you're listening and, and you're going to take it into your being and you're going to act on it. Because I'm going to act on it. I'm acting on what I've been told over and over by God. I'm acting on it. We need to wake up. So as usual on this channel, um, we're working on something we call meant where we're trying to really get people back on track so we wake up from this nightmare that we've all been dealing with so feel free to email us um, joyfido at hotmail.com or googlemail.com anyone is fine and then we have our whatsapp numbers that we put out you can always whatsapp us remember to like this video and share it and subscribe on all our various media you know facebook um instagram youtube and i really want to say thank you to all the people who who are beginning to see value from what, what we're talking about because in the past it's always been what she doing what she talking about but even i didn't even know what i was doing but i knew something was making me come here and sit with you and chat with you so thank you so much and god bless you